Start with Kristen. Uh, Dave, yesterday I know ahead of the game we talked about just um, that sense of urgency you were looking to go into these. When you look at game six, now back at home, a bullpen game, how is that just the approach of not having to get to a game seven and feeling like tomorrow truly is a must win for this team? Um, yeah, uh, it is going to be a bullpen game, uh, similar to what we did in game two um, with with uh, expectation of better execution. Um, you know, how we use the guys, um, I'm not sure yet. Obviously, that's a lot of it is dictated on, you know, how they construct the lineup. Um, but it's an all hands on deck situation. Um, and that's how I'm going to look at tomorrow. And, you know, with the pen, you know, there's only so much uh, you can push each guy. So it's, it's uh, you know, kind of just depending on, you know, where they're at as far as kind of hitter, pitch count, all that stuff. Is that just, I guess, kind of the balancing act with managing a seven-game series is just kind of having to want to go all in for game six but also have to be ready for a game seven potentially? Yeah, but I, but I, I, and I do feel that, you know, as our focus is still on game six, um, whatever it takes, we're very well equipped uh, to prevent runs for a potential two games, yeah. Hey Dave, uh, two questions. First one's probably going to be kind of annoying. Um, is Otani available to pitch either of the next two nights? Uh, he is not. Thank you for asking. Sure. Just wanted to just wanted to see if I can get on TV in Japan. Um, <laughs> well played. Since, since like day one in this job, you have always been very good at identifying leverage in games and essentially hammering you know their best guys with your best guys. I'm just curious, though, thinking about this series, what you have learned about that sort of strategy in a seven-game series, thinking to, you know, I think back to, like, Morrow pitching seven times in 2017 and just the cost of exposing your guys over and over and how maybe you've evolved on that. Yeah, I have evolved. Um, I, I think that in any one particular moment, um, I, I think that, you know, as it starts initially, there's – Speaking to the relievers, there's a trust tree. Um, guys you feel in the highest of leverage. And, um, you know, in each moment, you feel that that's always the best option. And um, for fear that if you go somewhere else or with another player and it doesn't work out, you didn't deploy your best option in that moment. And that's kind of the inner struggle that I think any manager has, and I've lived it. Um, I think, you know, for me, experience, having gone down that road, um, having some successes, um, but also some failures. And, um, you know, and I think that I've learned from that. And, and again, it's not easy. It's always good when your choice works out, whether it's the process is right or the trust in a certain player is right. And when it doesn't work out, you got to sort of reassess and reevaluate if the process is right. So I, I think that's probably, Andy, my biggest takeaway. And, you know, we have two games here, potentially two games here. And, and I feel that to prevent runs, we're in a very good spot. I don't think we've exposed our high leverage guys um, at all. Um, and that's part of kind of the learning curve for me over, over history, yeah. Okay, Jack. Have uh, you talked to Freddie yet today, and is there a decision about him for tomorrow yet? I haven't talked to him yet. I, I know he's in the training room right now. Um, I mentioned last night that I, I do think that his swing has been compromised because of the ankle, and he's grinding. Um, so, you know, as I sit here, I'm expecting him in there, um, but until he's not. But if it's costly uh, for him, for us, then we'll, we'll certainly pivot. And then when you say uh, the pitching plan being similar to game two, does that mean trying to get some bulk innings from whether it's Knack or somebody else kind of early in the game to bridge to your higher leverage guys later? Or could you be more aggressive with those guys earlier than, than last I week? think we can be a little bit more aggressive. Okay, go down here to Juan in the front. I guess kind of to that, like, how do you weigh in the fact that you have to, like, obviously, if you win tomorrow, it's, the series is over, but you, you might have two games. Like, how do you kind of balance that? I, I, I think, um, I, I think, you know, doing everything we can to win tomorrow, I, I just don't think there's much cost given that we have an off day today. 
um, where the pen is at, where the starters are at, um, which would, would bleed into the next day. So I just don't th think there'd be much cost, how I kind of manage tomorrow. Do you have a, like an opener yet? Or? We don't. We're, we're, uh, the guys will be out there shortly. Um, they're going to go through their catch play. Um, I, I really don't. I, I don't know and um, not sure, no. We're going to go to Mike. Yeah, to sort of follow on Jack's question, like of your three to four, maybe five highest leverage guys, how many of those guys are you comfortable going four outs, maybe even five outs with? A um, few of them. A few of them, yeah. Um, you know, given where we're at today with the off day and, and talking about tomorrow, I, I think a few of them for sure, yeah. I think they're all, they're all, they'll do whatever is asked of them, um, for sure. But obviously, Mike, the game situation uh, certainly matters. Um, you know, if it's a victory formation, we're going to do whatever it takes. You go here on the left. Hi. Uh, you mentioned about Shohei's base running last night. So uh, did you talk, talk to him about it? Uh, our our uh, Dino Ebel talked to him. How, how, how was that? I, 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 didn't, I didn't follow up. Yep. It won't happen again. Okay. okay. Thank you. On the right, Bill. Another evolution question for you. How has your confidence in winning bullpen games changed over the years? Um, you know what? I, I really I, I feel that I think I've always felt, Bill, that a bullpen game gives you a really good chance to prevent runs. There's a cost afterward. You know, you're talking about regular season games typically. Um, the win-loss, that – the offense scoring matters too, but I do think in a vacuum, a bullpen games give you a chance in a vacuum to, to prevent runs, certainly. I still stand by that. And if we had told you in spring training that you'd be running a bullpen game to try and get in the World Series? I would have taken the other side on that one. <laughs> one more. To put it bluntly with Freddie, has it gotten to the point where you feel as noble as his effort is, that he's hurting the team by being in there. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, I think that one component, um, if you're looking at the results of the last handful of at bats, uh, you could argue that point. Um, but I could al also argue that him doing whatever he can to be on the field and to post, um, I think speaks loudly in that clubhouse. Um, so then the decision is, you know, net sum, what makes the most sense to win the game tomorrow. And that's the decision we'll make together. Um, but I'm not going to compromise uh, his health or certainly winning a game tomorrow um, if he's not mentally and or physically ready to go. Okay, Fabian? To follow up on the pitching points, like, obviously you want to win tomorrow, but like if you are deploying all your leverage guys tomorrow, are you guys in a spot where you have enough pitching coverage for a potential game seven? Absolutely. We do. We do. Um, that's part of the kind of the math when you're in a minus game, um, you know, the last game, that's part of the math too. Yes. We're, we're, we're covered with preventing runs. Absolutely. And pinch hitting for Will yesterday was that just matchup? He took a hand. No, he took a he took a foul tip or or a batted a bat to the hand, the back of the hand on one of the plays. And I didn't learn about this until he was in the hole last night, and he just gave me a heads up. So for me at that point in time, I just felt that, you know, just to kind of give Gavin a chance at Stanek to take a look at him, uh, and then get Austin in there to catch. Was it his throwing hand or his catching hand? Catching hand. And is that something that's a concern? For uh, we, we looked at it. it sh it's uh, <clears throat> tests were negative. So, he'll, he, I mean, I'm expecting he's here today. I don't know if he's going to hit on the field, but my expectation is he'll be in there tomorrow. Okay. Bring back the one. Right there, one. Dave, what are you seeing out of uh, Teoscar uh, in this series? Um, I think Teoscar is missing fastballs. Uh, <clears throat> that's the number one culprit. Um, I think they're just kind of bullying him with the heater. Um, so midline, top zone. I think Manai is going to do the same thing tomorrow. Um, so I think if you can't hit the fastball and move it forward, 
you just expose yourself up to cheat to get to spin and that's kind of the, the main thing. And then with Freddie, like how much <clears throat> are you going to weigh in the fact that there is a left-hander on the mound tomorrow? I, that, that's part of the math. Um, that's part of the math, certainly. Um, I'm just going to go talk to him and, and just check in on where he's at. But I don't, I'm not going to make a decision today. I don't think we need to. And then we'll just kind of come in tomorrow, see where he's at. But, you know, knowing the arm who's, who's starting certainly is part of it, yeah. I have to imagine then that also goes into with Gavin Lux and him being out there tomorrow. But just in general, how is he doing with that hip flexor? Gavin is doing better each day. Um, I don't think we risked anything by getting him in at bat yesterday. He's not 100%. But with today being off, tomorrow not starting, um, I, I think that we're getting into a good spot. So um, hopefully we're out of the woods with Gavin. But uh, not 100%, but getting better. Okay, then Bob, right behind you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dave, in this series, why do you think whoever gets the lead doesn't, not only they don't give it up, but they blow the other team out? Is it the bullpens or what's going on? I think that's part of it. Um, I think that, um, you know, leverage relievers are leverage relievers for a reason. And typically, um, certainly I think across baseball, managers are being more aggressive once they catch a lead um, and go with those guys. And it's just hard to – you know, get back into a game or tack on. And so when you're seeing other arms, I think it just kind of exposes other teams' pens. And I think we've done a really good job. But I will say what Brent Honeywell did for us yesterday, um, I don't think he's thrown this many pitches in a big league game, uh, was huge. And so, yeah, they tacked on. But uh, what he did for us is going to really help us going forward, for sure. And the relievers this whole postseason have pitched more innings than the starters you think it'll ever revert back to the way it was one day or it'll always stay this way? Um, I, I think some, I hope somewhere in the middle, uh, more towards the starter going longer. Um, I don't think there's a manager that would say that they want their starter to face 19 hitters or 20 hitters in a game. But once the game is happening in real time, you just got to weigh if, which option is better. But I think uh, absolutely I'd, I'd love to – you know, have John Smoltz or Greg Maddox go seven shutout or throw a one hitter or a two hitter in a World Series game. That'd be great. <laughs> okay, we can take one more on the left here, in the middle. Straight back. Dave, in the last week or so, Kike's talked a lot about how he uses visualization and that's why he's been sort of successful. I'm wondering if you use that and then just thinking back to the, these last two games, your three pennants have all been clinched on the road. What, what would it mean to clinch something here? Um, I visualize, Eric. Um, I do. Um, I have quiet time. I do visualize uh, seeing good things happen. Um, what it would mean to be here would be awesome. Um, I think it'd be great for our fans. It'd be great for our players. And so, um, yeah, obviously, we know what, what that means. So. It's always fun to clinch, but to be able to do it at home um, is something really special. And, and then just to clear up, too, you talked about all hands being on deck. I know we've talked a lot about Yamamoto as a specific plan. Is he available in relief in any? He's not one of the hands. So that's fair. Very fair question. Thanks, Doc. All right, guys. Okay.